Hello. It's been a while since I did a, my last video and I had to take a stiff shot of whiskey before doing this. Whoops. Um, it's totally snowy outside, so I'm dressed for the winter. And I thought I would kick this off by reading a page from my metaphysical journal, which is at metaphysical journal, one word, blogspot.com. And it's where I'm currently doing my work. My thoughts have taken a little bit of a new direction, and I was hoping to get some feedback on this. So this is the 20th of posts that I did this year, and it's quite crucial because it looks at an episode from the past that is very painful to me, as you will discover in a minute. Um, the opening description is not of me. It's really important that you understand that. It's of some philosophy lecturer or professor somewhere. I've never owned a black telephone with a row of buttons. I've never had my name on the door, although I have worked in the philosophy department. So this is about someone who's set their career on making a success in the academic world and is beginning to question whether actually that's what they wanted. So I'm reading now from my screen. Why hasn't philosophy changed my life? You gasp at the absurdity of a question that seemingly came from nowhere. You don't know whether to laugh or cry. It's Monday morning. Pale February sunlight trickles through a drafty second door window that rattles whenever a bus or lorry goes past. On your desk, a disorderly pile of ungraded assignments threatens to topple onto the floor. You came in especially to do this, to catch up. No lectures or tutorials today. You snuck past the departmental secretary while she was on the phone. No one even knows you're here. The time is yours. On the landing outside, you can hear the muffled sounds of a conversation. I heard Williamson's giving a paper on scepticism at the joint session. Any idea what it's about? Don't ask me, I don't know. Laughter then quiet. It wasn't supposed to be like this. Years of study to get to where you are now, to be sitting here. Black telephone with an extra row of buttons, your name on the door. And yet it seems your life is in the same place it always was. Outwardly conventional, yet inwardly directionless and confused. By a roundabout route, you're back where you started. searching for meaning, where there is none. You didn't know that then, but you do now. The one thing that you do know for certain is that nothing is going to happen today. The assignments will remain unmarked. You are going to sit and wait. Watch the patch of sunlight creep along the far wall, along the faded titles in your bookcase. Wait for who knows what ideas to come. Two of the people who taught me at Birkbeck College, London, back in the 70s, subsequently committed suicide. I've talked about this before, so I'm not going into details here. It's a question that has never completely gone away. Why? What is it about this job that could make two young philosophy lecturers, with their lives ahead of them, go and kill themselves? Logically, one has to consider the possibility that it isn't philosophy, or professional philosophy, that drives individuals of a certain disposition to suicide, but rather that the job attracts persons of that sort. Maybe. But there's a larger question, surely. Philosophy ought to make a difference. Of the three co-founders of the analytic tradition in philosophy, Frege, Russell and Wittgenstein, two were deeply concerned about the point and value of philosophical thinking. Russell's essay, A Free Man's Worship, is a classic of atheist literature. Wittgenstein's 1914-16 notebooks, written in the trenches while he served in the Austrian army, contain profound reflections on life and death and the search for meaning.
Frege, the logic-obsessed mathematician, is the oddball. And yet from the perspective of present-day English-speaking philosophy, he seems to be the perfect model of what a philosopher should be. Philosophy made a difference to my life because I finally found something I was good at. <laughs> I was a dropout, a no-hoper who pulled himself together and learned the value of work. I remember as a first-year student staying up till past three in the morning solving a logic problem because my life depended on it. It was that simple. The lecturers who taught me, they hadn't been through what I'd been through. They were the academically successful, top of their class, glittering prizes. I aspired to be like them, but how could I be? How did I get here? The answer is simple. The investigation has led me to this point, to this precise place. I just followed a line, followed Plato's advice, and the argument brought me here. It hardly seems I had any choice in the matter, but I'm not sorry. Then why is my life not better? There is no answer, I used to say. Metaphysics is without consequences, save for the consequences of rejecting a false metaphysic. That was my philosophy of life. All the problems of life and meaning arise from metaphysical illusion. Solve that, and your life will be fine. It will be great. It isn't enough. So here I am, with the latest version of my story, a new idea. Life is a game. Nothing has fundamentally changed. I found some new words, a new way of looking at the same old question. Quote, everything that has happened in my life was necessary in order that I should become the person that I am, unquote. And the single thing that drives me to distraction is not knowing. I don't know what it is I don't know. I can't even imagine it. I can only keep going, try to manage my changing moods as best I can, ignore the fact that every day I am a day older, keep working and hoping. So, yes, I have a new philosophy, kind of. It's still based on the two-world metaphysic that I described in my, uh, what is it, 1994 book, Naive Metaphysics. But it's taken a step forward in that it's become more radical, much more like, if I can use that, like existentialism. And in particular, um, one author that I very much admire, Max Stirner, The Ego and His Own. Um, he was a philosopher that Marx, Karl Marx, absolutely hated, and he devoted one third of his German ideology to totally slanging him. Um, and if you want to know the meaning of Marx's diatribe, just read that section. It's called Saint Max. And Max Stirner gives the kind of ultimate theory of individualism. And he talks about any kind of ethical or moral belief, just wheels in the head, just methods that other people use to control you because you have to make up your own ethics and your own sense of what's right or wrong. It's all about you. I have set my affair on nothing, he says. Whatever that means, because I don't even know. Well, I'm... As far as ethics is concerned, yes, I am kind of a nihilist. Um, it is totally up to me to make my own ethical rules. But having said that, I accept in total the person that I am. Everything that has happened to me in my life was necessary in order for me to become the person that I am. I accept myself as I am, but every moment, every new challenge, every point in one's life where a decision, where the possibility of a decision appears, you're still free to do anything. And that's the point. You are making your life up as you go along. So that's what the existentialists were going on about. That you can't blame any of your actions on, well, the kind of person that I am, or how I was trained, or my brainwashing, or anything else. But I'm going further and saying, 
I accept that. I embrace it. I embrace the person that I have become, whatever that person is. But then I still have decisions to make, and those decisions can take me in any direction whatsoever. And behind that thought, which is, you know, it could just be homely advice, you know, how to live your life kind of a thing. I mean, Wittgenstein in the Tractatus says, um, true happiness belongs to someone who lives in the present. So this idea of living in the present, not um, looking back, isn't, isn't new. My new idea is that the whole enterprise of metaphysics in trying to say what really exists, um, trying to discover the real values, whatever they are, is mistaken. Because what there really is, is the doing. And by the doing, I mean this doing, what I am doing now. There is only the doing. And the doing has two elements to it. There's what I'm doing and what the world does. And by the world I mean everyone, everything. It's like a dialogue that involves two subjects. And anyone who's seen my dialogue, um, my video rather, um, Return of the Evil Demon, may guess that Descartes concept of the evil demon is a stand-in for anything that we that reality may be the thing my partner in dialogue reality the world the thing I'm interacting with that's all there is and each and every person who has ever existed and all the people watching this video now you are doing even if you're not physically acting, your mind is acting. And what you're doing is in relation to the entire universe. There's just you in the universe. And I'm certainly not saying anything remotely resembling solipsism because the whole point of doing is that there has to be something that is done too. Doing is an action that involves two elements, myself and the other. And the other can be a particular person. It can be an animal, a cat or a dog, or even a plant. And how you, re how you relate to the other defines the kind of person that you are. So getting back to the topic of this video, life and death and suicide. It seems to me that people who question why they are alive have got some false idea whereby they look at themselves externally the way other people see them. They make an evaluation about their life, a bad ev evaluation. They see somehow that they failed to be what they thought they could be. They accept the evaluation of others. They're cowed by it. Or they put on a front knowing the reality is very different from the front and fearing that that front will finally break down. So really what I want to do is set myself free, free from all that, and maybe help or get others to see how they can do the same. Um, I don't want to end on a somber note. Um, I'm in a very, very good mood as it happens. Um, and I'm hoping that my metaphysical journal will continue. Um, in the past, I've you know been on a good run with my blogs, whatever they are, the Glasshouse Philosopher, etc. And then suddenly it's just stopped. I've just lost the inspiration. Um, but I really do feel I'm only on the beginning of the journey now. And I will make videos whenever the mood takes me. Thanks for watching. Bye.